Cody Orchard. Yeah, good morning, everyone, um, and welcome to this webinar. In the next 30 odd minutes, we'll be talking about Prisma Access 3.1. Um, again, a reminder, Prisma Access 3.1 is an update to our Prisma Access 3.2 release, which was launched in August, which was a release in August. 3.2.1 as well was released at the end of mid-December, around mid-December, and is a GA release, and all the features that I'm talking about is public knowledge um, and the details deep dive for each of these features has already been updated in the documentation. Just a reminder of what's part of 3.2 and 3.2.1 release. So holistically kind of talking about it, we have four key innovation areas that we are um, investing in uh, from a product strategy perspective. And with Prisma Access uh, 3.2 and 3.2.1, we released features in these four buckets. The first one was Prisma SASE, which is all about how do I make my connections from my users to my applications really easy and make sure that it's secure at the same time. The second bucket is talking about enhanced security. So what are the in innovations that we've got, got to the product in terms of the new uh, you know, new security innovations that have been already released uh, across the product. The third bucket is around simplified operations. How do we make it easy uh, to operationalize a lot of the new features that are coming in, but at the same time, make it easier for customers to uh, onboard and set up Prisma Access. And the fourth bucket is best user experience, kind of talking about a lot of the you know, uh, innovations around ADIM, um, digital experience monitoring, um, and just kind of making it easier um, to provide the best experience for those clients connecting. Uh, just kind of digging deeper um, on this slide. On Prisma SASE, we have, um, sorry, can you, can you go back uh, to the previous slide? Just, uh, I want to spend some time talking about the, the feature. So with ZTNA Connector, uh, this was already launched in 3.2, where we made it really simple um, to provide access to both modern cloud native as well as microservices private applications and meet all the ZTNA 2.0 principles for those private applications. Um, and, and that's one of the key innovations that we've come to the market. It's in preview stage right now. Um, and you'll see us kind of bring in a, in GA release um, or making the feature GA in, uh, in the next few releases. Um, the next feature in Prisma SASE is private application NAT. Um, so if you have requirements where you want to reduce your client IP pool requirement, um, private application NAT was, is, uh, helps you leverage uh, something like an RFC 6598 space for accessing private applications, even though you might be using uh, RFC 1918 um, in your uh, private NAT data centers. In enhanced security, uh, we release advanced DB and advanced URL filtering. Now, these features protect against evasive web threats and malicious command and control, um, and they do that in real time using NL AI uh, technologies. And they do that by uh, by using cloud uh, delivered security services um, and, and integrating with the uh, Prisma access in real time. Um, again, on enhanced security, we provided. DLP and the new innovations like SSPM uh, with Prisma Access. And all of these security innovations are provided on a single pane of glass with the SSC Unified Management Dashboard. For, uh, for users that um, use headless devices uh, like servers and non-user systems, we introduce Kerberos SSO authentication uh, with, SS with explicit proxy. This enables you to authenticate uh, those devices and get them on the network in a simplified fashion. And with 3.2.1, uh, the last bucket that I'm going to highlight, we, we introduced user ID optimization. So there are a lot of innovations that are going to dig deeper into what those are uh, in the next few minutes. Um, with simplified operations, we introduced the dual portal support on a single Prisma access tenant. So if you have customers that are in the process of migrating to SAML from, um, from on-prem auth methods like Radius, or you want to simplify multiple authentication methods on a single Prisma access tenant, we now support that uh, with the dual portals. Um, and um, finally, kind of just kind of moving ahead and talking about best user experience. So we already launched some of the integrations with self-service ADIM, 
uh, Zoom integration with ADEM. Uh, and those are all publicly available now for uh, Prisma Access customers to leverage. Um, thanks. Can we move to the next slide? Yeah, and one of the things that I want to highlight in this slide is a lot of the innovations that we spoke about have already been delivered to customers as part of 3.2. In this update, we will be digging deeper into the features highlighted in blue, which is multiple auth portals on a single tenant, licensing enhancements, granular IP allocations per compute region, user ID optimizations, and CIE, which is Cloud Identity Engine Multi-Auth. Again, a reminder, um, if you as a customer want to adopt 3.2, we have guidelines around what is the preferred panorama version uh, for 3.2 preferred release, uh, which is the features in the orange box. Um, the two options are 10.1.7 and 10.2.3. For 3.2.2 innovation, um, the uh, minimum panorama version is 10.2.3. Again, this is um, there are some timelines where we are uh, mandating customers to upgrade their panorama to adopt the latest features. So uh, please take a look at this link um, to make sure you're um, you have you're aware of uh, what are the versions that you should be on. And uh, there's a link also on the Prisma Access 3.2 overview webinar that we did some time back. So um, feel free to kind of take a look at it. Uh, moving on, uh, in the next few slides, I'm going to spend uh, some time just kind of digging deeper on those new features. So the first one is multiple authentication methods on Prisma Access Tenant. Now, what happens is a lot of customers want to migrate or seamlessly migrate to um, a cloud-based authentication method like SAML. Um, and in that scenario, um, SAML cannot be part of an auth sequence. Uh, due to that, customers were forced to either create a new tenant um, for just SAML authentication and then migrate the users, uh, which is inherently very uh, operationally complex. Um, or if there are some scenarios where customers want SAML to coexist with non-prem identity protocol like Radius. Um, what we are doing to solve this use case for our customers is adding a second portal on an existing Prisma Access tenant. And each of these portals will be identical in all configurations apart from authentication. So with, uh, you can have, with this solution, you can have a different authentication made uh, method for each of this portal. So in this scenario, what we kind of are comparing you have radius for your portal one and SAML for portal two. That way from a customer perspective, all they are trying to do is just select a different portal in their GP agent. And as, well, as long as they kind of do that in the global protect, the customers can migrate from uh, one authentication method to the other. Um, now this, uh, there are some requirements to enable this feature. You need to kind of have auth cookie override enable, uh, which, the, which when you enable this feature, will do it for you. Um, and the second is, uh, this is only supported on Panorama right now. We will be building, bringing in cloud management support, um, shortly. Um, in, in terms of the two portals that we have, um, you, you, uh, the, the names are identical at this point. Um, they'll be only differentiated by port number. Um, so just something to keep in mind. Uh, everything that we're going to talk about for this feature has already been publicly documented on the Tech Talks website. So moving on to the next slide, just kind of talking about uh, the innovations that we're bringing in uh, from the user ID optimizations. Now, um, we have a lot of customers using Cloud Identity Engine Directory Sync, which is the CIE Directory Sync. Now, the CIE Directory Sync uh, works in two ways. There are two functions. One is to make sure that Prisma Access gets all the users uh, and the user group uh, mapping. And this is important because now they can have, uh, they can create those user policies based on groups. There is another component where you create those and those uh, user policies are created on Panorama. So on Panorama today, um, 
it does the panorama today does not directly integrate with cloud identity engine uh, for Prisma access. So customers had to kind of go in and manually type those DN names for policies or had to use a master device. Now what we're doing with this innovation is going away from that and syncing and, and plugging in CIE or the Cloud ID engine directly into Panorama to get user group mappings so that you can create user group policies. Uh, there is one more innovation that we're bringing in uh, that is multi-tenancy. So today, prior to 3.2.1, directory sync was not supported on a multi-tenant panorama. We are going away from that and enabling that feature for all customers out there. So if you have a multi-tenant panorama, now you can use directory sync as well. So moving on, I'm just going to talk about how do you, how do you configure some of these things and, and what does that end user experience look like? So on Panorama today, um, you have now the option. So if you go to uh, cloud services configuration, um, either from mobile users and um, click on the, on the settings, on the settings, on the device group, you will see a new box for cloud identity engine in addition to the user ID master device. You can select the CIE and any CIE that you configured with Panorama will show up, um, will get populated in this box. As next steps, once you do that, um, once you select a, a, a CIE that you're interested in, you will be able to see a lot of the users. So in the next slide, we are showing how a lot of the users gets populated on their own uh, with a single drop-down menu. So uh, if you move to the next slide. Yeah, so then uh, as you can see, like when you're creating a security policy, uh, you don't have to manually type in the source user that is populated for you. And, and Panama gets this information directly from the cloud user ID. Now this helps in multiple ways because you have the same groups um, and the same users configured uh, or synced between Panorama as well as your Prisma access infrastructure. So when you create a policy, you just create a policy in one place and um, the entire system thinks all those users and groups for you. So it uh, simplifies uh, and also helps with reducing errors for a lot of the customers. Now, uh, talking about multi-tenancy. So this is something else that we're bringing in. So as you can see, we are leveraging a multi-tenant panorama uh, with Prisma Access over here. And even with that, you will be able to enable directory sync integration with group uh, under group mapping. So this was something that did not exist before 3 to 1, uh, but we're introducing in, in 3 to 1. So thanks. So uh, moving on and kind of talking about the next innovation, um, we have a lot of customers that require uh, authentication either with multiple SAML domains. Um, either a mix of SAML IDPs and certificate. Uh, they want to customize some specific users, get authenticated with Okta, some specific customers get authenticated with Pink or Azure AD. With that, what you can do now is you have the cloud identity engine. So with the cloud ID engine, uh, basically directly integrates with IDPs, but also integrates with Prisma Access. So on the Prisma Access, you can just create one cloud authentication service or the CIE authentication profile. And with that, you will be able to authenticate between uh, Prisma Access and, uh, and CIE. And there is be multiple authentication profiles that can be supported on the cloud identity itself. This is supported on NGFW. Um, it's supported on Panorama and cloud management. Uh, um, global product, and now this is supported on Prisma Access as well with 3.2.1. Another key innovation that we're bringing in uh, as part of 3.2.1 is the ability to support VDI environment. So what is the complication with shared desktop VDI? What happens is with VDI, multiple users will be operating behind the same IP address. So from a user ID perspective, um, things start breaking down because now a lot of the users will be uh, on, the, on the same IP address 
uh, from from connect from connecting from the VDI. So what we do with this is now we start TS agent enables ports to differentiate users connecting behind a single IP address. So if you have um, user one connecting behind IP address 10.1.1 uh, and there can be multiple users behind that uh, sing single VDI instance, they could share the same IP address, but based on the port now we can differentiate and provide unique policies for those uh, platforms. Um, this platforms are supported for, now we support this for Windows Server 2019 and Windows 10 multi-session. So Azure Virtual Desktop is Windows 10 uh, Enterprise multi-session. We support a VDI environment for both of these uh, platforms. Um, this was recently launched in 3 to 1. Uh, I have a link to the tech documentation uh, in this slide. So you should be able to kind of take a look at it and um, and configure this in your setup as well. Uh, there are some limitations in terms of the scales and those are highlighted um, in that link. Um, and finally, kind of talking about granular IP allocation control per compute region. So today, as the system's designed, um, you can provide IP pool configurations at a theater wide level. So you can you can just kind of do it at worldwide or North Americas, uh, South Americas, uh, Africa, like EMEA, APAC. So this limits uh, some customers from adding granular security policies if they want to do it uh, on an IP pool basis, right? And um, and the pools are more macro in terms of uh, getting to the closest uh, internal DNS infrastructure. So with that, what we're doing is we are bringing a concept called IP pool group. So with IP pool group, it's more granular um, IP pools that can be allocated for mobile users based on where they are located. So this enables, uh, as an example, you can have in this screenshot, you have an IP pool just for Hong Kong. Um, you have an IP pool um, just for uh, Latin American countries uh, like Paraguay, Brazil, and Venezuela. So you can have, you can create those policies uh, or IP pool uh, groups based on those user groups, or sorry, based on those location groups. So this is part of um, three to one, and this location groups can be created for both mobile users and remote networks. So all you need to do is upgrade your plugin, um, and if you're on the right panel of version, you will be able to uh, leverage a lot of these functionalities. All right, um, moving to the next, and this is the last section, so before, uh, and we can jump into uh, Q&A after this. Um, we have introduced some licensing improvements at part of three to one. Um, the, there is the one first licensing improvement is flat service connection pricing. So service connection um, are linearly proportional to the number of users. Um, and because of that, sometimes they become prohibitively expensive. So what we are doing is we are making a flat price for each additional service connection um, and um, and this gets away from uh, the service connection per unit, which is the per user per Mbps uh, per year. And this is applied for all packages, enterprise, business, premium, and business. Um, and we will be kind of providing this uh, functionality uh, for our customers. Uh, move to the next slide. Yeah, and then there is one more location add-on SKU. So with local licenses, now customers can enable an additional location um, on their uh, on, on their existing subscriptions and um, go beyond the five locations that were uh, that were present with with the local licenses. So this is something that is coming with three to one as well. And uh, the SKU is. Uh, Prisma Access Location Add-on. So this was released uh, for customers and, and customers should be able to use this um, out there. Uh, um, all right, uh, with that, 